In this A3 tutorial, I'm going to go through and explain the relationship between 200 volts and 400 volts in a three-phase system. In order to understand this, we need to have a quick look at what's going on in terms of physically. If we consider this as our supply, and whatever it is over here is our load, you will usually see our three phases connecting them off like this and with our neutral wire, hence a term of four-wire circuit. Phase A, phase B, phase C, and our neutral. And if you were to take a voltmeter and you were to do some measuring here, you would measure an RMS voltage of around about 230 volts between the neutral wire and any of these phases. 230, 230, and 230. If you measure the, the voltage between some of these, between, for example, say, A and B, you'd measure 400. And if you'd measured between these two here, you'd measure 400, and between these two, you'd measure 400. That does not appear to make much sense. How can you have a difference between all of these of 230 relative to this point and a difference of 400 relative to these. One would think that if this was 200, if this was 230 and this is 230, the difference between these two would either be zero or maybe perhaps 460 or whatever. It, it, to some people it does not seem to make any sense. To explain this, the best way of explaining it is to look at it first in the time domain and then in the phasal or the vector domain. So let's plot these. If you were to use an oscilloscope instead of a voltmeter to measure these, this is what you would see. In the time domain, here we are here, time, we would see a sine wave of phase A. And if we were to put another oscilloscope probe in there, we would see a sine wave of phase B and phase C. We would see our three waveforms from our three phases and they're all 120 degrees apart. There's 180 degrees there for one cycle and 360. This, this, this time here between any particular point in time here and its relative point on another wave the peak is 120 degrees. Now We've been measuring over here between the neutral wire and any of these lines, which is amounts to measuring between our, our reference point and the RMS voltage. So the RMS would be through here somewhere, give or take. And that would be our 230 volts RMS, and that's what we'd measure here. If we were to configure that meter measure to measure the peak voltage, then we'd be measuring 325 here, because the relationship between the RMS and the peak is a relationship of root 2. Now, to the subject of this tutorial, where does 400 come from? We measure 400 volts between here and here, and we can see that in this waveform here. If we were to connect one lead of the voltmeter to any of these phases, and the other leg to any of the others, we're effectively measuring not here, but here. That is 400 volts. There. There. Anywhere along here between two of these, we would be measuring 400 volts. And some people perhaps are not convinced by that, even though it's perfectly true. So what we can also do is we can take the time domain and we can show it in the phasor or the vector domain. And this gives a perhaps a, a clearer understanding of what's going on. We plot our phase A waveform with a magnitude of 230 volts at an angle of zero. 230 
230 at an angle of 0. We know that phase B is lagging phase A by 120 degrees, so we can draw that down there. And phase C lags phase A, RB, phase A by 240 and lags phase B by 120. As we see here. Phase B is lagging phase A by 120, which is what we see here. Phase C is lagging phase A by 120, which is what we also see here. Up here we measured between a couple of these phases and we got 400 volts. We can do the exact same thing down here. We can measure between A and B, and here it is here. Similarly, we can measure between B and C, and between C and A. If that there is 230 volts, that there is 400. If you were to take a ruler and do that, that is what you would measure if you put a plot that on graph paper. What we can therefore do is take these and refer them to our origin. So here we are here. If we were to take this 400 volts here and move it to here, we would end up with a line like that. V, A, B. And from measurement of that that had been done on the graph paper, we would see that that is 400 volts. And this angle here is 30 degrees. This is where the 400 volt, 30 degree reference come from. Similarly, if we look at VBC over here, which is almost the length of my pencil, we can see that that there, which goes off the bottom of the paper, is way down here. VBC is 400, and that is an angle of 90 degrees, lagging. Similarly, VCA, we can take that one there and put it over here. And that angle there is 210. So when you measure your phase voltages and your line voltages over here, and you get 230 and 400, this is where these come from. It's a simple mathematical engineering demonstrated fact. What we've done is we've taken these measurements, what we know, we've put it in the time domain, we can see it here in the time domain, and then we've moved it from the time domain into the phase or domain. We've got our phase voltages, which everyone knows about, at 230 at 0, 230 at minus 120, and 230 at minus 240, and then we've measured between those two, just as we would up here, between here, and we see that our 400, we reference that to our origin, and we end up with 400 at 30 degrees, 400 at minus 90, and 400 at 210. That is the relationship between 230 and 400. One final comment, this relationship does work out to be root 3, and that applies in this perfectly balanced situation. If any of these input voltages here were not 230, but were rather 235, or they had a slight tweak on the angle, maybe it wasn't by minus 120, it was minus 115, or minus 125, then that will change the magnitude of VAB. For example, if VAB was actually out here, if VB was actually out here, 
VAB would not be this line, but it would rather be this one here. Our magnitude of VAB would change as well as our angle. We would end up with something like that. And the numbers would change, and the root 3 rule would not apply. The root 3 rule only applies in perfectly balanced systems, and that is why as soon as you delve into any depth of engineering, we need to ignore it.